So what was really cool about getting to this event is was thinking about different things and different stories or parts of my life I've been a part of wherein uh, I previously probably hadn't considered that there was, you know, that there's another person whose life to them is as significant to them as mine is to me, who their read on something was entirely, entirely different. Uh, you know, my, you know, it's something that I really enjoyed. Uh, you know, there's a pretty high s chance <laughs> Look out of my uh, notorious, you know, back catalogue of being a bully uh, <laughs> was terrible for other people. I'm not actually a bully. I just threw that in <laughs> as an improv. Um, <laughs> hindsight's 2020. Uh, but I, I was particularly I, I taken or thought of a story uh, that started at a at a summer barbecue uh, about five or six years ago here in Auckland. Uh, with some very close friends of mine, and it was a, a great time in life between finishing university and having to worry about why you would have gone to university in the first place uh, <laughs> and what all of that means. And accordingly, it was a very relaxing atmosphere. It was a, a long summer's evening uh, and, and, and we were drinking beers and doing other things that, that cannot be broadcast on our nation's public broadcasting station. Um, well, they can be. Maybe when this is released, uh, marijuana will be legal. Um, <laughs> And it was, it was a wonderful atmosphere. It was, re it was really fun, and there was a lot of, you know, uh, back and forth between friends. It's quite, it's, I think it's embedded in our nature as New Zealanders. That it's, it's very fun to take away whatever we think is the most valuable for the other people we're around uh, and watch them react to that. And then once we get to see them react to that, tell them, oh, no, we were just kidding. It was all a bit of a laugh. Uh, and we were all sort of standing around and taking turns at doing this with one another, and there was a conversation between two people at the party uh, which sort of, it was like cream rising to the top. It was the most interesting thing that was happening that night at the barbecue. Uh, and it was between a, a friend of mine called Dave uh, and this other guy, and it sort of started as a bit of fun. Uh, it was just, it was a conversation between them about who was a faster runner. Very basic premise, very, so, you know, it's very, it's, it's very young, but I think it, it, it ages with us. I've always been very interested in the notion of speed. I think that being a fast runner is pretty much the coolest thing a person can be. Um, whenever anyone you know, troubles me with, would you rather be the strongest person in the world or the fastest person in the world, I can't actually answer them because I'm so offended by the basic premise of the question. Um, And so it was between Dave and, and, and this guy, and, and they were arguing about who would be faster over 21 kilometers, or what is otherwise known as a half marathon. And at the t so this is five or six years ago, and Dave uh, was, he was a semi-professional athlete. He, was, uh, uh, he played halfback for uh, like the Taranaki B, sort of, you know, the, the grade below the premium grade of rugby. And he was living in Auckland. He was uh, playing at the time for the Auckland Sevens team. So he was in training for a nationwide Sevens competition. Uh, and obviously to play Sevens, that's pretty much the fittest a human being would reasonably have to be uh, at any time. And the other guy was uh, <laughs> mostly just taller than Dave. Um, <laughs> Dave was, you know, about five foot nine, and this other guy was taller, and for whatever reason, that seemed to imbue him with a confidence that he was probably faster <laughs> over a reasonably long distance <laughs> than Dave. Uh, I'm in the fortunate position of being a tall guy. I can kind of see the logic. <laughs> so we were all having a good time and socialising with one another, and uh, the, the, sort of their conversation specifically reached a zenith we were in, it overrode anything else that was happening at the party. They sort of, they had cornered everyone else, you know, at the barbecue with the notion of who would hypothetically win this race they were having, to the point that it was no longer acceptable for this race to exist hypothetically. Uh, <laughs> that is to say, for there to be any sort of resolution and us not to call this entire very enjoyable barbecue a huge waste of everyone else's time, that we had to know. <laughs> and it was quite late, you know, in the evening by the time we'd reached this point. So, uh, we, you know, in all of our infinite mercy and wisdom, we decided that tonight probably wasn't the night for the race. 
Uh, the race would be at the it, w- it would be on the day of the Auckland Marathon Half Marathon Fun Run, uh, and it would it, it would take place. That was, was about three months after the barbecue, and the conditions were they were pretty explicit. They were that Dave, on account of his pre-existing fitness and standing as a semi-professional athlete, uh, wouldn't be allowed to train expressly for the race. So he would be allowed to train for the sevens, whatever that entailed but nothing more. <laughs> and the other party, this guy, who was, his, he was allowed to run um, as, mu- you know, as much as he so chose. He was, he, was free to ru- he was free to train to his heart's content. He had quite literally an open slather uh, to, to fill with as much running around and exercise as he possibly could. Uh, and so the party finished, and you know, the conditions of the bet were understood, and the, 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 the outcome of the bet, the, the, what we agreed as a, as a compromise for railroading an entire barbecue's conversation was that the loser of this running race uh, would suffer the indignity of, in essence, being branded. Um, they would get the winner's initials and time tattooed on their right buttocks cheek. Uh, and that's not to say anything against, you know, the left buttocks cheek. <laughs> I mean, you, it, it's, it would be incorrect to say all buttocks cheeks are made equal, but, you know, by and large, on each person, I would say that all, everyone's pair of buttock cheeks are largely made, I would, you know, I would say it would be very unusual for anyone to have a serious imbalance between <laughs> s- size and shape. But I, that's not to say I've seen all of the but um, <laughs> no, I'm just speculating. And so fast forward three months, and race day arrives. Uh, and uh, our two runners are both... It, it, I think it would be prudent for me at this point to say that in the, in the build-up to the race, that there was a lot of uh, a back and forth, I think, verbal sparring... Uh, with varying degrees of belief behind what was being said, but you know, there, there was a very, it, it seemed to be very important that there was a psychological element to the race and that, you know, that this wouldn't come down just to physical well being, that maybe one, part, you know, one party could outdo the other party just, just with words. Um, and so three months later, race day arrives, and the, the two races, uh, the, it, it's, a, it's a summer's morning in Auckland, uh, and the race is beginning in Koe Marama, uh, and it's, it's very warm. It's seasonably warm. If it was winter, it would have been described as, as unseasonably warm. Um, but on account of the linear nature of the story, <laughs> it was seasonably warm. Uh, what with the race falling in summer. And these two punters, uh, they arrive together, and um, <laughs> and the, I think neither of them really have a clear read on how the other one's feeling. The, the, the idea is that, that both parties are feeling a, 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 as comfortable a, a, as one another, and Dave and this guy, uh, suddenly 8am 8, 8 rolls around, and the race begins in earnest, and they, and they start running. Uh, and I'm not, I'm not an, a, a seriously experienced runner, I've, I've I have successfully run a half marathon before. Uh, I did it as a result of a heartbreak, uh, and I sort of decided that the thing to do would be set a goal and run through the fact I was miserable. Um, <laughs> and <laughs> running to very solitary, so I, you know, it, it eventually worked. Uh, it's hard to say if it was the running or the passing of time. <laughs> it's a very solitary pursuit. Uh, but it, it, so you know, I, I I feel like I had a read on, on what was happening, a, a, and watching it unfold. The, the the first five kilometers, Dave and this guy uh, were very convivial. There was conversation, there was merriment, there was sort of you know there was laughter. To to see them running, you know, you'd think these are two friends who are just out for a a, a jaunt on a Sunday morning. <laughs> um, I mean, it's pretty warm to be going for a jaunt, but you know, God bless their souls. They're doing it anyway. Uh, a, a, and so after, after 10 kilometers, there's this group of friends who were sort of 
monitor, you know, naturally the people who are at the barbecue are very interested in the outcome and the event, uh, and so we're also present and, and moving around the course to support, you know, the varying factions. I think I should also tell you that people who were at the barbecue uh, had taken upon themselves to wager <laughs> on who might triumph. And so after five kilometers, they look like it's probably the firmest their friendships ever looked to an outside eye. They, I mean, I, I think they're both just masking nerves and anxiety, but they look like they're getting along very well. And after 10 kilometers, they both still, they, don't, they look good. The guys look good, but the, the conversation's running thin. Um, there doesn't appear to be as much to talk about anymore. I don't know if you've wound up talking to someone at a party and realized that either they or you aren't as interesting as they or you had hoped. <laughs> but also, having just been to the bathroom and retrieved a fresh drink and being like, well, fuck, <laughs> <laughs> something's got to give. Uh, so, 10 kilometers past, after 15 kilometers, Dave looks phenomenal. <laughs> I can't emphasize this enough. Dave, he, he's, he's, he's looking really, he's, this guy's looking really good. <laughs> right? he's, got, he's wearing a headband. His hair's sort of naturally taken on a part. It's sort of, it's, it's, you know, <laughs> Dave is a dish. <laughs> <laughs> and this other guy, he doesn't look as good. Um, he looks wet. <laughs> he looks really hot, but the sort of wet where you know it's a cold wet. <laughs> you know, his body's as hot as the water on him is cold, in spite of that water presumably being created by his body. It's a very confusing, troubling sort of wet. <laughs> They've just run up a hill. And as they get to the top of the hill, you can see a moment wherein, uh, you know, they're, they're still jostling for position. There's no more conversation, but it's an even race. And I think both factions are thinking, in spite of the wetness, uh, that they're in with a hot, a hot chance. You know, the, 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 why not give this a red hot go? And so this guy, this wet, taller guy, he puts the gas on. This is about 16, 17 kilometers. This is the moment to, sh this is a 21 kilometer race. This is the moment to shake Dave off the tail. And, and you see this guy start putting on the moves as, as, as he runs downhill, which is a, it's a silly, it's a silly time to do it because <laughs> gravity trumps height. And <laughs> all the, the, the whole idea of it is, there's no way that the length of stride could possibly beat a hill, a, going down a hill. It's not the right <laughs> time. <laughs> and at 17 kilometers, it becomes evident that this, as a strategic racing move, was not sound. <laughs> and Dave eases past this guy as this guy is told by one of the course markers, so there's at different points on the course, there are people there to sort of tell you which way to run, or uh, in this instance, uh, to go to ground. <laughs> now, <laughs> what this guy needs to do is go to ground <laughs> right now. <laughs> and I think what this guy needed to hear at that time was it's okay to go to ground <laughs> now and I was this guy. <laughs> and I had sea legs, and everything was going around me, but I was trying to move in one direction, which is very confusing. And I went to ground on a berm inside of a beautiful property in Koei Marama. And the, the course marker leant over me, and he looked at me, and he said, are you all right? And I was lying on the ground, and I said, Mark? <laughs> Mark Williams from high school? 
what are you doing here? And he said, I'm going to call an ambulance. (laughs) And I said, there's no need for that. (laughs) I've got a race to win. And he said, nah, (laughs) we're going to call the ambulance. And after much confusion and a moment wherein two of the friends who were watching the race had found out what had happened, tracked back, came and saw me and physically picked me up as I told them I need to piss now (laughs) and ushered me to the corner of a driveway of this beautiful property. (laughs) And Kai Matama and the beating hot sun. And I did my wheeze (laughs) and the ambulance arrived and the two paramedics got out the back of the ambulance And I saw one of them, and I said, David? (laughs) David Dingwall? From high school? And they said, no. (laughs) You're going to come in the ambulance now. And I went in the ambulance, and I talked, and I talked, and I talked. I was trying to explain to everyone that I had to finish this race. But they wouldn't listen. I wouldn't listen to reason. And I got to the hospital and I went through four IV drips in a matter of hours. What I had uh, was what is medically known as dehydration. Uh, (laughs) I wasn't well. I'd run a half marathon three years before this one and thought that the fitness just sort of carried over. And eventually I got discharged, and a week passed, and I sort of thought the whole thing was over. And then my friend Jono invited me to a Facebook event called a fundraiser for Guy's Tattoo. (laughs) Wherein he was uh, taking contributions from different members of the friend group, barbecue attendees, uh, to help crowdfund my tattoo. Uh, (laughs) And accordingly, (laughs) I think it would only be fair. So I got it done in Scrabble letters to class it up. (laughs) So this is DO, which stands for David Ormrod. In the corner, the number value is 135. He ran a half marathon in an hour and 35 minutes. It's pretty quick. Now, this is Patrick Schwarzenegger. (laughs) But (laughs) that is an entirely unrelated story. Uh, (laughs) But the thing is, I've only ever really thought about that race in the context of of myself, of how I thought I was going to win this thing, and I crushingly, in the most spectacular fashion, didn't. and like it's, it's, I, I, the, the clock is literally still running on this half marathon. I have <laughs> the longest half marathon time in the world, undoubtedly. But, and, and to me, it's, sort of, it's, embarrassing, it's this embarrassing story. But to Dave, never until I was agreeing to do this show did I think about, this is, the, like, this is the cool, this is what, he's living the life I thought I had laid out for myself. <laughs> He's got a partner and a golden retriever and a house in New Plymouth, all right? It's, it's what could have been. <laughs> and it's like for every humiliating failure, there's probably someone on the other end of it going, well, fucking of course. <laughs> I tried harder than you. <laughs> and, you know, all power to those people. Anyway, that was my other side of the story. Thank you very much. <laughs>